He's one of the best in the business. And the Pittsburghs, does, uh, to use the famed Godfather 3 phrase, every time you think they're out, they bring themselves back in. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are currently sitting there at 7, 6, and 1 in the mix in this crazy mixed-up AFC in 2021. Joining us here is uh, from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers Pro Bowler, Minka Fitzpatrick, on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. How are you, Minka? I'm good. I'm good. How y'all doing? I'm doing I, fine. I called in, and, and all I heard was uh, screaming and yelling, talking about I caught the ball. Yes. All this crazy. <laughs> yes, sir. It was it was uh, on uh, on our pregame show on NFL Network, NFL Game Day Morning, uh, on the demo field, which is right in front of the home of Super Bowl uh, Fifty Six, yeah. SoFi Stadium. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm out there catching passes, um, uh, which, you know, not many hosts are asked to do, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I haven't dropped one all year. Irv, Michael Irvin's dropped a couple. So I, I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm saying it with my chest these days, uh, Minka. Yeah, so yeah. I said, I'm they not going to, I'm not going to drop a football the rest of the year. And, um, uh, I'm already one for one in that department. So catch okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> maybe it's because uh, you're not playing defense on me. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Did I see you on game day morning yesterday? Did, were you arrived? Did you arrive in, uh, in, uh, Alabama colors yesterday, Minka? Did I see Man, that? So, so, so let me tell you, mm-hmm. I lost, I lost the bet to one of my homeboys and, uh, I had to dress, uh, I don't know if you've seen, you know, Steve Harvey, how he yes. has all these different suits yes. and, and crazy uh-huh. you know, outfits. Yeah. I lost the bet, and my homeboy got to pick uh, two two uh, suits for me to wear that uh, that were fashioned by Steve Park. So I had to wear that one uh, yesterday, the all red and with black shoes, looking crazy. Mm-hmm. And then uh, next week, I got to wear an even crazier one. So can I, I ask uh, you what the uh, wager that uh, put you on the losing side was? Yeah, so, okay. so so you know the game FIFA, the soccer game. Okay. Yeah, so we we played the best two out of three. He beat me the first time, and that was just for one. That was just for one, mm-hmm. one suit. Okay. And then I was like, d- double or nothing. So I, <laughs> I lost again. <laughs> okay, so, let so me got me for two. Let me ask you this: um, Look, you're a two-time All Pro, Minka. So yeah. clearly, you coming to work with cameras on, eyes on you. Uh, that's a that's a that's a hefty price for you to exactly. put out there. What about exactly. your who's your friend? What 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 was your friend putting up that might be somewhat maybe? All, all, all he had to do it, it wasn't a fair it wasn't a fair bet. All he had to do was wear wear a suit that I picked uh, to work one day, and that's it. Are there cameras trained so on him it? coming to work or what? No, nah, he, he, he works he works uh, you know regular nine to five. Okay, all right. Okay. It, was, it was more. It was an unfair bet for sure. <laughs> <laughs> lopsided. It was, okay. It was just, yeah, lopsided. It was just more about the uh, competitive, competitiveness. Okay, uh, I like it. I like it. And who who's your who's your who do you play in FIFA? Who's your who's your guy that you play in that? I'm game? a Liverpool. I like Liverpool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Salah. So you're you're a Mo Salah guy. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Minka Fitzpatrick, learning more and more these days. So, uh, to what do you owe the resilience of your team, Minka? To what do you owe that? I would just say, um, I would just say our, our will to, to find ways to win. I think, um, you know, a lot of teams when you know they're down in my guys that we are, you know, when we have the uh, amount of you know, things going against us that we have had, you, you know, you see a lot of teams kind of fold. And um, and not step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. But we've had a lot of young guys, a lot of inexperienced guys, come up and step up to the plate. And we got Coach T uh, holding us accountable to the same standard as as you know the players before, and uh, to the, just the high standard that he holds everybody to, uh, including himself. So it's a combination of our, our will to you know keep pushing, keep fighting, uh, even when we're down big, even when we're you know still in the game, just mm-hmm. keep pushing and. And also, uh, you know, just our leadership, at Coach T. With Coach T, let's uh, let's talk more about Coach Tomlin. What does he do? What does he say that that translates that does resonate when when uh, you need it most? What does he do? Yeah, I think I think um, I think it's just how we move throughout the week. It's nothing that he says in the moment. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's, it's how we move throughout the week. It's attention to detail. It's uh, communicating on all fronts. It's being transparent. You know, being open and honest about what we need to work on, and, and you know, putting it up in front of the team. You know, what I'm saying and saying, "Hey, look, this is something we need to fix. If you don't get it fixed, 
you're going to find somebody else that can fix it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, you know, that puts the chip on people's shoulder and makes them and humbles them. You know what I'm saying? And he'll do it to anybody. He's done it to me before. He's done it to Ben before. He's done it to TJ before. He does it to anybody. So I think um, just moments like that. Um, and then just like I said before, just the standard of, of excellence that he holds everybody to. He's not letting anybody slack in practice. He's not letting nobody, you know, just <laughs> mope about throughout the day. It's a, it's a high energy uh, attention to detail. Uh, all throughout the week. What do you mean he's told you? He's told you, Minka Fitzpatrick, if you're not going to do the job, we'll we'll find somebody else. He's literally told you that before. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, he he say to me, you know, there's a point in the season where I wasn't tackling good enough. You know, what I'm saying earlier this year, and he didn't say those words exactly to me, but you know, he he's getting on me about it and saying, hey, if you don't fix it, you're gonna have to, you know, do something to change it up. You know, what I'm saying not put, you know, right. stuff like that. So. Um, like I said, just, just being open with me. You know what I'm saying? He wants to have one of those but he's saying we got to find something, you know, to fix it. Well, yeah. I, and Minka Fitzpatrick here on the Rich Eisen Show, I, I mean, I, I'm not telling any tales out of school here when I say that Chase Claypool, your teammate, had quite a, a very long week. I know that sometimes it, it helps to have a mini-buy and have an extra time between games, but for him, I imagine that was an even longer week. Did you say anything to him? Any, anything? Or how did the team – uh, either talk to him or rally around him. How how would you term it, make a Fitzpatrick? No, I mean I I think we all um, the the dudes that needed to talk to him talk to him. Uh, Coach T addressed it as well uh, in, in a fashion you know that I had just uh, mentioned. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, and and that's it. You know what I'm saying? We, we learn from it. We move forward. Um, and he is up to him if he wants to you know change uh, and, and fix. You know, uh, you know, his attention to detail and, mm-hmm. and the way he moves throughout the game. So, um, you know, we're not, we're not a team that's going to be ragging on a guy or, or beating him up or right. something that he did. We all make mistakes. But like I said, we're also going to hold him accountable and make sure it doesn't happen again. Do you have any thoughts on the subject of uh, music for practice while we're on the subject matter, Minka? Yeah. <laughs> you no? Know? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I don't know. I've been at teams where we had no music. I've been at teams where we had music playing the whole practice. I mean, I think the players determine the, the energy. Um, you know, Coach T decides to turn it off. Because we just warm up with the music and anyway. we okay. practice with it. All right, so it's not um, totally music-free once you get out on the field yeah, is what you're nah, saying. No, nah, no, nah. Yeah. Okay. So we got a little bit of music in the beginning. We're warming up All right. and individuals. And then once you got to start practice, practice, it's uh, – it's no no sound. Was one of those teams that you were on that had music practicing Alabama Crimson Tide football? Or no, he had no music. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had we had crowd noises. We had <laughs> okay. All right, very good. And I want to circle back with Saban in a second. Minka Fitzpatrick here on the Rich Eisen show. So what what do you what what do you think you guys can do this year? I mean, you're still alive. It's really remarkable the number of times where we thought. You were down and, and out, and, and, and this AFC just keeps on changing each week, and you with it, it appears. How, how far do you think that you can go, Minka, with your opportunity here? I mean, I'm, I'm a guy that takes it one week at a time. Um, you know, we got a big team in Kansas City uh, going out there, playing them. Um, you know, I think they're, they're top of the uh, conference or their they division are. for sure mm-hmm. right now. So um, we got to go out there. Play at a high level, compete, and win the game. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all that we can focus on. We're taking it one week at a time. Couple minutes left here with Mika Fitzpatrick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know if you did get a chance to watch the Sunday night game, Saints and Bucks. Did you get a chance to, to I, see? I did not. I okay. Did not. There was a moment in the game where Chris Godwin gets knocked out because the, the Saints defender hit him low. And he caught him in the leg just as his leg was still on the ground and, and, and his knee, uh, you know, buckled and out for the game, could be out for the rest of the regular season. Chris Collinsworth, who called the game on NBC, former receiver, was saying how that's a defenseless receiver and perhaps hits like that should be uh, considered illegal. <laughs> You're laughing already. I give you the floor. Football, man. I don't know what they expect this to do anymore, man. It's, it's, like, obviously, you don't want to get nobody hurt. You know what I'm saying? We'll be playing for, for, for God when he's a great player. Uh, for speedy recovery, but at, at, the, at the same time, it's I, I had a play last uh, against the Vikings, our last game, where I hit a guy, clean hit, shoulder to shoulder, hit him hard, and the ref just threw the flag. And he was right there, you know what I'm saying, threw the flag on me. Right. And it's like, 
what what are we doing, man? Like, and it was clear as day. The replay, everybody, the whole stadium was booing. You know what I'm saying? We were at the Vikings right. uh, stadium. Whole stadium was booing, and it's like you're you're, you're a part of the football is 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 that it's it's a violent sport. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna get hit hard legally. People are gonna get hurt. You know, you don't want you don't will that. You don't want that. But it's, it's part of the game. You know what I'm saying? And if you can't play defense, it's like if I have to think about how I'm hitting this person or rather than just going for the ball, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'm not trying to take your head off, but I'm going to let you feel me. I want you to feel me. I'm not just going to let you catch the ball and, and you know, make you feel comfortable catching. I want, to make, I want to make you uncomfortable. It's part of the game. You know what I'm saying? So I think people need to uh, – I understand you want to protect people and want to make the game safer, but at the same time, you have to understand the type of game that we're playing. And all the players know what we're signed up for. All the players know that it's 100% guaranteed people get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, but there's just some things that it's, – it's, 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 just, it's just hard, man. They're making the, the game real hard on defenders. Um, but – it is, it is. So, I, I hope that that never happens. You know, no, I know that. And, you know, Collinsworth obviously <laughs> played in a couple Super Bowls, so he knows the position as well. Maybe, you know, and, and here's the thing. It, is it true, though, that in that sequence in Minnesota that you were telling the official that you did not make contact with the receiver's head and you both watched the replay on the monitor on the big screen as it showed you did not touch him in the head as the ref was telling you you did? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, so they had the big screen, right? We were in the end zone. We were like, we were in like the two-yard line. Uh-huh. And I'm looking up. Clear as day. He, he was looking at me. I don't think he was looking at the monitor. Right. And I'm like, I'm pointing at the screen. I'm like, I didn't hit him in the head. And he, he goes, he like, looks at me. He's like, yeah, you hit him right in the head. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, all right, man, I just watched it. I'm not going to argue. I gave him some kind words. And then <laughs> kept him moving. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Just don't stare. That's all I'm saying. Don't stare at the other bench. Yeah, don't stare. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No eye contact. I know. Uh, before I let you go, I'll, I'll, I've asked this question of uh, quarterbacks, mostly, at Alabama. Tua's has answered it. Mac Jones has answered it. Now uh, Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, has answered it. I'll ask you, what's the most upset you ever made Nick Saban, Minka Fitzpatrick? Oh, man. <laughs> I got a lot of... Uh, Moments with him. Okay. I say I say when that, that made him upset, but it was also kind of funny. Um, so in my junior year, yeah, we we're playing Texas A&M, and uh, we were we were up, I think it's like a couple points, mm-hmm. and they were kicking an onside kick, and I was the uh, you know the guy that would catch the ball on the left side yeah. for the onside kick, Hands and everybody would block out catch the ball. So they kicked it right at me, and I caught it. As soon as I caught it, I looked to my right. And I see nothing but green. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're always supposed to just take a knee no matter what the circumstance is mm-hmm. uh, in that situation. So I so I, I caught the ball, and I looked to my right, see nothing but green. So I just take off running. Boom, full speed. <laughs> and I get to, like, the 10-yard line, and I wasn't going to score, but I seen the kicker coming, so I just like, kind of ran out of bounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, I get to the side. Everybody's, like, excited. Oh, you know, I'm great today. Blah, blah, blah. It's nice match of the time. I get I get to the sideline. Coach Saban is, is just ripping me. He's, he's like spitting all of my visor and getting into my face. And he's like <laughs> he was he was ripping me a new one. But I think mean, it was funny because like you know nothing bad happened. But you know he wasn't pleased with it at all. Do you ever go to him later on when it's all cool and you know everybody's cooled down from from the heat of the moment and just review like hey you know I mean I. I still didn't score. I mean, we still got the ball. Better field nah, position. Nah, you didn't. Nah, no, nah, no. Did nah, you, nah, didn't nah, like that? Not Because you know, Tua, Tua did that with him when he. The, the thing that he said that he made Nick the most upset was when he took that sack before you know throwing the game-winning throw to yeah, win the yeah, national yeah. championship against Georgia. He said Saban was so upset with him, and he kind of went up to him after the game, like you know, I I did make the throw to win it. And he said it kind of made it worse. Kind of made it worse. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely make it worse. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to know when to take the L and just keep moving on, exactly. I guess. Exactly. Well, you didn't yesterday, that's for sure. Thanks for the call, Minka Fitzpatrick. Let's do this more often, and I will be certain to have my eyes peeled on your arrival next week to see what else you, you have to wear <laughs> to wrap things up yes, for your uh, wager loss. Thanks for the call, Minka. You be well. All right. Appreciate you. You got that. It's right back at you. Minka Fitzpatrick, everybody, of the victorious Pittsburgh Steelers. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.